Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a brand new campaign playing as a certain nation, pretty much the Republic of the Rio Grande, and we shall have established some game rules. No one's getting buffs, we don't believe in buffs here. Behavior, let's go ahead and load a preset such as Rio Weirdness, and uh, for the most part things are mostly going to be default. Ragnar's going to be in power, Elder Harden, Enclave Takeover, uh, First Citizen Lynette, White Claws, Terrors of Utah, and that's pretty much it. Cool. And we're, of course, going to keep off historical AI focuses. So, before we get too far, let me tell you what mods I'm using. Obviously, Old World Blues, Colored Events, Colored Buttons, Player Life Peace Conferences, and the mod compilation established by Shutterfly and a few other figures. So, no Shattered uh, Wasteland right now, no Sweet Home California, but the mod compilation for Old World Blues. But let's do our first focus, which is... American Intervention. The Republic was born from American occupation, but people on both sides tried to walk back from the brink. Cool, and let's see what divisions we have. Hmm. So we got a couple of these guys. Whoa. What is... Is this new? Hold on, I don't think I've ever seen this. Why are they so colorful? That is cool. That is... That is cool. I've never seen that before. Awesome. Which means... You guys are going to get an upgrade immediately. Glory Elite, we got some special forces here, but you know what? I think we could use some Mexican chariots. And by Mexican chariots, I'm thinking some APC divisions. I guess in Mexico they don't call them Mexican chariots. They're probably just called chariots, but that's just me. Uh, yeah, let's go into it. So, this is one thing I'm going to try to do in this campaign. I'm going to try to start off early going for APCs. I never do this. I never, ever, ever do this. So, instead of like a normal infantry, I want to just start off using these chariots. They're already 20 combat width. I'm really impressed with this little stuff here. This looks awesome. But, uh, armor? They already have armor on them. Defense is not bad. Soft attack ain't bad. They got no special forces or, you know, support companies, but that looks really, really awesome. But let's go and do some engineering, get some research speed. Let's grab some industry. All the good normal stuff that we always start with because it's very, very important. So we need some pipe guns, which will get some basic weaponry. We're obviously going to need some scrap gun trucks if we want to use APCs and saws. We're going to need some of this. We're definitely going to need some anti-tank. And also, if you didn't know, uh, Tlaloc is already dead. So, we no longer have Tlaloc's protector protection, so we might go to war very, very early. Let's see, we got one, two, three, four, five. Do we need... Yeah, we already have one elite division, so we must well do that. Scrap motorcycles we can completely ignore because we don't care about them. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. What do we need? We need guns, and then we get some some of that. Do we have a navy right now before we make any ships? Yes, we have a small little fleet of five ships, like cruiser, destroyers, not bad. Uh, Leonis, Leoncio Alonso. Cool. Go ahead and do that and train so you can use up all of that. Some civilian workshop sounds pretty good. Uh, pretty much, and I do know that probably Texas is going to rebel, but you know what? When does Texas not rebel against Mexican overlords? Just saying. Uh, let's see. And since we already kind of have a fleet, ooh, should I make some capital ships? I do. I want to wait just a little bit, maybe? Do we get anything else here? It really doesn't look like it, so I'm just going to make some of these. That'll be fine. That'll be fine, just in case we get more dockyards someday. And it's always the beginning that we have to start doing stuff. Like that. Uh, don't go to Laredo. Let's go to Gloria. I don't trust Texans, even though I really trust them a lot. But not really. But yes. Cool. And that's pretty much the start of the game for us. I doubt we have any planes, any ships. We've got a full army here, led by Lee Robert. Ooh, Armageddon Station. If there's any place in Mexico where you can still smell the pride and fear of the old world, it's Armageddon Station. The station was designed for the Great War as a backup plan for American control of Mexico in the event of a nuclear war containing manufacturing facilities, equipment, and resources to rebuild in the event of a nuclear holocaust. Yum. Or great. Legends tell of rooms full of powered armored and laser rifles of care caverns containing Gex or geckos, and construction equipment. That's just one problem, though. No one can get in. The facility was supposed to be, always be occupied, but American soldiers deserted when the bombs began to fall. And anyone who wants to enter the facility needs the four keys scattered across Mexico. Tlaloc received one, a gift of the United States Army. Rio's puppet president had one, as did Colonel Griffin. Gloria thus holds two. And Santa Anna acquired the fourth through ways you don't want to really ask about. The keys are named after the four horsemen of the apocalypse. War, famine, death, and plague. Whoever owns all four has the keys to Armageddon. Good. The RRG, so we hold hunger and war. 
Flalok holds deaths, but he's already dead. So we don't know which one he holds. It's probably Maximilian, because he owns uh, the lair. And then Santa Ana holds Spike. Have fun. And we no longer get that. Cool. Who has more attack? You do. Do you have upgrades for us? Ninja. That's not bad. I don't think these guys have any recon on them. Oh, they do have recon. Oh, they also have uh, fire team platoons. I I just can't get over this. This is the first time I've ever seen this. Is this an Old World Blues exclusive? Because that looks amazing. I love it, love it, love it. Just it's so colorful. There's different things for each one. <laughs> just who cannot love that? I'm sorry. I just I love seeing stuff like that. Just mm, great stuff. Oh, inspirational. That's one of my favorite ones. Cool. And let's let the time go on because it's taking me forever to get through our first focus. Oh, pause it. So. The Republic reborn in the year 2051, the United States invaded and occupied Mexico, citing political instability, environmental impact, and the protection of American citizens as their reasoning. That sounds like good reasons. In truth, the move really was, though, to protect American interests in Mexico, specifically the large portions of the oil industry owned by American corporations. The perfect reason. Although the occupation went smoothly at first, the American military was still being met with resistance farther from the border. Seeking a way to invest American assets in the north of Mexico without facing much criticism, the army of well, officially recognized the Republic of the Rio Grande as an independent nation and began construction efforts to increase stability in the region. In truth, though, the infrastructure built by the American forces was almost exclusively military-oriented, designed to create inroads into Mexico developed enough to support mass deployment and long-term supply chains. The capital of the newly formed Republic was arbitrarily chosen to be Piedras Negras, and the leadership was handpicked by the occupying forces to ensure cooperation. The Americans, at the very least, provided the capital with its own executive, judiciary, and legislative buildings. During the 24 years before the Great War, though, that the, Amer that the Republic of the Rio Grande was occupied, where did the Americans focus their most efforts? The military industry, who get guns, or infrastructure? That's a lot of infrastructure. That's actually quite a bit. Do we get two arms workshops or basic weaponry? Well, truth be told, we have a good amount of manpower right now. And I could really use a lot of gun trucks. If we get, you know, these trucks early on, that's really, really good. So I'm going to go with military industry. And that actually helps with our stockpile supplies, which is not looking very good right now. So, El Epocalypsis. When the end came, we were not Mexican nor America. But a people who came together to survive. Absolutely. Uh, politics in the Republic of the Rio Grande. So I don't know this too well. They're complicated to the average wastelander. And the Republic here consists of the numerous states with each part which has its own senators and deputies, all of whom must play a part in the Republic's traditions. In order to become the president, Mora Rosado Anguera will have to woo the support of a majority of the Republic's senators through a series of decisions in the states of the Republic. At the moment, support in the Republic's Senate is divided between the candidates who need to lobby state by state to gain support. So, ooh, Senate. I don't know much about it, and I don't want to read about it. I just want to do it. Which I know play... Oh, replace these guys? Probably not. Let's disable that. Let time go on, kind of. Let's put both of you guys under a field marshal, who we don't know. And you know what? How about these guys? Eh, they don't really need to train. You know what? I don't want to do too much early conquest, just because I don't want Texas to rebel too much. Oh, I made a mistake. And do something like that. There you go, my friends. But I have... Oh, Dante. Hello. I do have an idea of which path I want to go down already. A new old gun. Uh, you know what? I like reading most of this stuff. But if you want to read this, go right ahead with Nuclear Rain. Uh, I'll, I will read the last paragraph, though. Near the very end, just before Mexico was bathed in nuclear fire, there was a cry for help on the radio. Soldiers from the Mexican army who deserted to cross the border and find shelter with the Americans, whose bunkers were much more prepared for the apocalypse. The Americans quickly found the battalion and hurried them to safety. What did these men provide the survivors with? Knowledge? Ooh, less of pocket assumption attack and defense on core territory, or experience. Get more army XP. Yeah, knowledge is much more important. It's only 5%. Less supply consumption, but still. Reclaiming the Republic. Democracy was ultimately restored. We are Republic, in fact, as well as in name. Yes. And we can't, right now, we can't see the little decisions we have to do to make sure that we become more democratic. So, so if you want to read this, go right ahead. Um, I guess I'll read it too. So, the Republic of the Rio Grande was still a shadow of its former self after three decades. It had been in a self-imposed dictatorship for the last 30 years, but with the death of Colonel Griffin, the Republic transitioned into a democracy as he'd wish. Setting up elections for the numerous branches of the government, as well as for the president themselves, was much harder than anticipated. But at the end, it happened. The first president of the Rio of the Republic, Julieta Torres, had built her platform around the reclamation of lost land. Over the next few years, it reclaimed Mexico's largest steel factories, mines, and key supply depots. Numerous other facilities and locations were captured, such as Armageddon Station and the city of Monoclava. 
Monclova. None of these came without losses as the bandits who set up camp in Monclova and across most of the uncontested territory proved difficult to dislodge. A border was drawn from the point at which the Republic could expand no longer. To the south was some unknowable un agent whose robots seemed to content who seemed content to protect their borders for them, and to the west sat a great desert from across which no invader could hope to prevail. Julieta's eight-year term came to a close soon after she met her goals. She chose to run again once more. This time, her platform was centered around reconstruction and preservation. What did she prioritize? Foundry? Repairing the city. Ooh, we get civilian workshop and manpower. Usually getting scrap metal is much more important. 20? Oh, but we already have a good amount of scrap metal. Let's see. We are currently on wasteland economy and discouraged traders. Ooh, do we need any more scrap material? It's almost always worth it to go for resources. Almost always. That being said, we have quite a bit already. 20, and speaking of resources, if we conquer any of our neighbors, we're going to get more scrap. So I think we'll be okay. We can always build more too. I'm going to go with this one. So the last ace in a lost hand. We didn't go quietly. Kaiser shouldn't have counted on that. Good. Good, my friends. Good, good, good. So, we're stationed here. I have a good feeling, like I said. Texas might go no bueno to us. Oh, oh my god. I, I, nah, I'm probably not going to read all this. So, if you would like to read this, go right ahead. But it's about hubris. They weren't wrong. The Republic of the Rio Grande was a pathetically small standing army due to the protection they had from the south, west, and even now from the north. Good terms with the Brotherhood of Steel meant they never had to worry about their Texan land being molested by raiders. The Legion should have won. There was almost no way the Republic could have defeated them. Almost. Good. And now we can do stuff. We can reclaim the Rio Grande. Looking pretty good. Just about rule goals times. Establish the Air Corps. Prioritize the military, which looks actually really, really good. Military innovation. Or we could do industrial subsidies. I'm going to go ahead and choose uh, prioritize the military so we get some political power. It's time to focus on Rio's military. It only takes 30 days. So, regarding this group, the Republic of the Rio Grande, we can do eventually the Da Vinci of War to get Mora, if we want Mora. We can do Dante's Inferno for Guerra's Conviction. Or we can do the Rose of Mexico with Rosado. Uh, with the context of this campaign, this series, most recent campaign, I used power armor, so I don't really want to go intellectual. I think I want to go try to go with Dante's Inferno. Oh boy. I mean, I'd love to read all this, but this is a lot of reading. So if you want to, go right ahead. But all that remained was a deciding or decision where the battle would take place. Mora was more than just a charismatic statesman. He was also an excellent tactician. Where did he decide to face Paulus's legion? It was a battle. Under the cover of night, more recon and land night attack, or between the rocky desert crags. I like the defense on core territory, but this seems like the best choice, especially if we're already using um, recon. So, if you just get more recon on your recon, that sounds like really good recon. So, I really want to go with Dante's Inferno. Hopefully, I choose the best way to do it, but ooh, true north, strong and free. We might invite people to join our faction with the Rio Pact, it seems like. Vindicta? Dante's Vindicta. Oh, I need to do this one first and do the other one. Yeah, we'll create the real pack. That's my goal. If we don't do that, we'll see what happens. Oh, well. But I don't mind taking out some people here first before we create the real pack. But something tells me we're going to focus on these guys first. I want to save up my political power. Olympus tribe was annexed. Promises of peace is a terrible thing to choose. Ooh. Begin a scavenging program. We might do that later on. Justify a preemptive attack. We need more war support. Uh, so we can do that. Which looks pretty good. Prioritize the military. So military innovation. Glory Academy looks pretty good. Radic. Not too bad. Looks pretty good. War games. I'm going to go over here. Industrial subsidies. Rio's heart was in its steel mills. But subsidies can promote industry in the rest of the Republic. Great. And we have enough political power for me to choose... Oops. Lalox Stagnation. I'm going to choose something that people sometimes don't like me to do. And get more political power. Because... Actually, I want stability and political power. I think that would be better. Ooh, political power gain. Mm. Just so that, because I know in the future we're going to need more political power. And we get 1.29. 10% not bad. 0.10, but we get more stability as well. I like the stability. So, I'm going to go with that. So, right now we get 1.44. So, we get 0.15 more political power. Because once we get that, I want to be set with political power for a long time. I'm all about that PP. Good. And, actually, we got some army XP. So, motorize, we don't need you. These guys look okay. We have these guys, though, for... You know, uh, garrison divisions, industrial planning, great. 
Work is needed, just good. Improvised tools. We're gonna go with that one. And I'm probably not gonna be using robots in this campaign. We're probably just gonna go down conventional warfare because it's pretty conventional for the Republic. In which I'm probably gonna go with mechanized since we're using, or we're gonna attempt to use APCs as much as possible. So we need more APCs and fire teams. Right now, guns are okay. I'm gonna lower by one because guns, we can make guns pretty cheaply. Pretty darn cheaply. Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab that. So now we're making 1.66 political power a day. I mean, I'm gonna keep these guys for the entire campaign, so it's best to do it early on. And then I'm gonna lower wasteland economy. Eventually get. Ooh, decorated hero looks pretty good. That's not bad either. Carlos Al Avia, an honest man. Ooh, more daily people support. Usually I don't like getting people support, but that might be the best choice to take. Industrial subsidies, though. Reestablished Reclamation Bureau. That's good. We want more construction speed. So the Reclamation Bureau was disbanded 20 years after the Great War. Considered, of course, a dismal failure. At the time, the Republic lacked the ability to repair highways or rail networks across the nation, or even to repair pre-war facilities. But now that we're standing on our own two feet, we can find pre-war technologies and turn them to our own purposes. Yes, absolutely. Oh, oh what is this? The Vencedores. Yes, I love it. Mexican spirit. Ah. And with our chariots that we're making, amazing. I want I, I I really want these chariots. Like chariots sound awesome. Spec ops, yeah, that's for one single division, which it's to end combat with. It's okay. We really love fire team platoons though. And recon. We really love recon, man. Yeah, look at that. So good. So good already. Good, good, good. So I hope you're all having a good day, like I said earlier. Uh, I'm doing well myself, but uh, you guys... Are you not training? You should train, my friends. Train. The Republic needs a strong navy. Next up, Mexican arms. Um, I shall go with... Well, we're kind of waiting for this. We're claiming the Rio Grande. Mm, I'm going to go with... Ooh, ooh, civilian workshops. We can build things faster. Let's get with some Mexican arms. It is time to develop our firearms industry outside of the Texas Arms Association. Rio will forge a new path, because you cannot always rely that the Texans will be here. But Gira bans campaign donations. One way the TAA is able to influence Rio's politics is through liberal donations to senators, who supports its policy of selling arms, weapons, to all comers. Gira wants to pass legislation, restricting arms sales, but before he does that, he'll have to cut off their influence. As a first step, Gira decides to issue a presidential de decree banning donations to a con congressman's campaign unless you are from their district. This means Rio can no longer bribe congressmen from other states. The TAA claims that this is unconstitutional, but to many it seems that this is one of the only ways to break up their influence. We lose stability, get political power, which is kind of okay since we traded with this person, Fio. And actually, we've got enough right now. Can I go to... Oh, I can't lower it. Oh, woe is us. Major businesses. Ooh, lady, ooh, lady lasers, and Zuhuquotel Industries. I can't say that. Obviously, that actually might be good to get for more uh, production, infantry production. And I almost never choose this, so that might be good. To high noon. Oh, hold on. You get more research time, but high noon Texas arms. Whoa, that. Mm. This looks really good, but we're gonna go with Cesar Lopez. See so we get some army XP. What else do we have here? Robotic subroutines. Ooh, caravan guards. Field medic. And what do we have here? General wait and see. More hardness. Bring your civilization is always good to do. I'm going to go with Lopez here. Just be, so we can start getting some more army XP if we need it. And that might help our land doctrine. We can start changing up some of the uh, militia. Oh, we also need to research dogs. It's always good to research dogs. Uh, we probably don't need that. You guys. Yeah, 14 combat with... I don't want to increase it now, but just because we need to get rid of our deficit of guns. So we can increase our surplus of APCs and support equipment. Anti-tank is looking good because, well... The folks down south. Some sons. Actually, all four of these sons. They like robots. And, yeah. Ooh, Umbra's joined the Brotherhood of Steel. That's cool. Uh, Mexican arms. I love it. Gloria Rhodes. That's pretty good. Original designs. I get even more arms. So the pre-war gun designs are fine, but... We need something more robust for the wasteland. And I, you know what I love? I love that these are 30-day focuses. I love, love, love short focuses. At least compared to 7-day focuses, which seem like they drag on and kind of takes you out of the game. If it's every 30 days or even 56 days, you feel more into the game. And it, and that's just... Mm, it feels good. RGRB. RGB lighting. Yes. Good. Now we have this again. 
Hmm. I wish there was a way for me to get more weekly war support or stability without hurting myself too much. Well, there's that, but that hurts my war support. Right now, though, military high command. I mean, I'd love to do all this stuff. But let's get some more guns. You know, as someone who's lived in Texas before, I've got to do high noon arms. Texan heritage. Now, we might lose it if we lose Texas. So I'm taking that risk right now. But we'll see what happens. We get a gun a day. Not bad. Not bad. 1.62. Not great. But not bad. Are we mobilizing more? No undesirables. We discriminate. That's okay. Hey, get more uh, division organization. Petty criminals. Homicidal conscripts. Great original designs. We're going to go for a, a 308 for every man. Gira wants to give everyone a rifle. We will face a legion with burnished rows of steel. Oh, good. It is July 2nd, 2275. Where do we want to build? Not Texas. Right there. So I'm going to build up more civilian workshops. Even though we are getting more and more arms workshops. Good. That looks really good. This is looking better as well. Do that. It seems like making saws take the most time here. So we probably want to prioritize doing that. Everything else is looking not too bad. Even though anti-tank rifles... Yeah, we need to make more, but... Probably these guys won't have robots. I could be wrong. But we'll get them made soon enough. And Garabans trade with the Legion. So the Legion's rapid expansion disrupted the TAA's traditional markets, literally raising some clients but creating a huge market in Flagstaff. Despite efforts to ban the trade, many of the TAA's weapons fell off of Brahmin and ended up in Legion hands. In the eyes of Gera, arming the Legion for its next invasion of Mexico was a bad thing. Gera chose to dust off an old real law that imposed a death penalty on anyone who sold weapons to raiders and decreed that the Legion was nothing more than a band of raiders. The TAA believed this was disastrous because it would only encourage the Legion to invade Texas to seize their arm factories while cutting out their livelihood. Guerra believed any criticism was nothing short of treason and swiftly crushed any dissent in the Senate. Ooh. In a raid on the TAA trading posts in western Texas, Guerra confiscated munitions bound for Flagstaff and arrested several Texans for high crimes against the Republic. Ooh. We only lose stability, which is unfortunate, but maybe an unfortunate good thing. Woodworking, great. Nice. It's a little bit too early to do that. Let's grab some of this. Uh, we grab some of that. We're going to grab some of this as well as for training time. So for the Republic. Hmm, I'm thinking. Hold on, let's do this one first. Battle plans, good. We might as well get some more defense and organization. Let me know in the comments below. I'm thinking here. What type of planes should we use? Because you know me. Or if you don't know me, welcome. But if you know me, I love using close air support. It's my favorite thing to use in overall blues. Should I use close air support in this campaign? Or... Should I use our plane bombers? Let me know in the comments below. Both have their pros, both have their cons, but let me know in the comments below. But let's do our next focus, urban industry expansion. Rio's people are industrious. With our help, they can be industrious at industry. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now it looks like our guys are doing pretty well as well. They don't need any more training. They're looking good. And I don't want to train them anymore because that would ruin or hurt our ability to get more stuff. So the Red River. Gears crackdown on the TAA's trade only made the TAA more desperate. Who are they supposed to trade with? The robots that rule the South? The super mutants that sulked or skulked in the ruins of Texas's great cities? The feared and powerful Chicago Enclave know the trade would and had to continue. The breaking point came during one raid on a TAA warehouse along the Rio Grande in response to rumors of another shipment to Flagstaff. When the Baron demanded to see a warrant and drew a pistol, the officer shot her out of hand. The Barons claimed Gira was a despot, and Gira saw more sign of their treachery. Ooh, I kind of want to ignore this. It's clear who's at fault here. You know what? You know what? How about... Ooh, they're, ooh, they're violent. I love it. I love their violence. Let's see. You know what? Let's go ahead and do this. It's a little bit ahead of time, but I think it'd be worth it for now. We can like, oh, hold on. We got some political power here. Oh, wow. Holy cow. Look at that, that political power cost. Wow. Let's see. We can, oh, I need 50%. I get 5% more consumer goods, and we can build stuff faster. I think that's worth it for now. Hmm. Good. So you guys are right here. Uh, you know what? I'm going to wait until they rebel, so... I don't want to lose... Oh, I lost stability. Oh, why? Why must you hurt me so... Ooh, broadcast wrestling matches? That actually might be worth it. 3.5... Or it's only for 20 days, though. Agri organized agriculture. Engineering. Reinforce rate. Thank you very much. We're looking pretty good here. And we have urban industry expansion. Finished. Just in case... Reynosa Harbor. We really can wait until they were 
Bell, so Riverside Industrial Facilities. The, through some proper investments, the Rio can become a highway for commerce. Yes, I love civilian workshops. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Look at all that manpower we're getting. Amazing. So right now we have 36 factories. 19 civilian workshops. We're really only using 12. 3 naval dockyards, which is not too bad. And 14 arms workshops, which is actually really, really good. So right now we're full, full production on saws. Then we're going to make some more of this, make some more of these. Scrap gun trucks are coming along very nicely. We are trying to get two at a time, so it's taking some time to do this, but, you know, it is what it is. Especially when our soldiers in the field need more, you know, saws. Which is unfortunate because I made sure I, these guys all became bigger than just standard kind of Coast Guard divisions. Energy cell okay, huh. Weight is RKG. That makes sense. Breakthrough. Nice. It just makes it so much more colorful, and I love it. I'm sorry. I just I just love it so much. Gloria Harbor Dockyards. The National Institute of Pre-War Technology. That looks pretty good. Do we need that right now, though? Oh, we need water. Oh, we're, we're thirsty. Actually, I am a little thirsty. Gloria Road, though. All roads can lead to Gloria. Ah, water is... Mm, I just had some water, and that is... That is great. When you're thirsty... And you have water. It's great. It's just great. <coughs> Especially when it goes down the wrong hole. <coughs> wow. Um, I was really not expecting this. I was expecting the Warren to do really well, but... I still need to play as these guys someday. Big Mama Mesmeralda. Oh, my goodness. Hmm. I have to play as this group someday. 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 I promise. Uh, the Day of the Dead. Oh, this is not good. 2 o'clock. 22nd of October. 2275. It's remembered in the Republic's history as the Day of the Dead. The day Gloria burned. The day it smelled of ash and burning fat. Probably not the fat off Mesmeralda. But the TWA set off a series of bombs at key locations across the Republic. In the Capitol building, in Congress, in munitions depots, and at bridges connecting Texas and Mexico. Even as Guerra tried to reorganize or organize relief efforts, he learned that the TWA declared independence in a gunsmith's estate. The secession of the TWA was a near-fatal blow to Rio. With its capital ablaze and its munitions industry across the river in a hostile country, the nation's army was on the verge of collapse even as Paulus was raiding its borders. To solve the crisis, Rio's leaders would have to handle both the TWA and the Legion remnants on their borders. We get a national crisis? Oh no. Oh no. And Texas secessionists. What's more iconic? Texans and rebellion against Mexico. I mean, come on. What else is new? So I'm going to let that sit over there for now until we finish this one up, because why not? Because we can. Because I don't want to read this anymore. And hopefully we keep this. Oh, cool. Very nice. Good job, Legion. Good job. Um, cool, cool, cool. And ignore it. Cool. All right, let's do that. Oh, you evil buggers. Where are you at? You're down there? Oh, that's Nuevo Laredo. And that's Laredo. So, since we have these guys here, let's grab you. Uh, one, two, three. Let's grab three. We got to. Uh, well, hold on. Let's make it six. It looks pretty wide. Grab two. Put your. Oh, uh, well, you're looking pretty wide there, too, son. And put everyone else on there. Alright. Oh, did I do that? No, I didn't. That was my fault. That was completely my fault. Good, and now we get the decision. The President's Speech, the Hero's Oath, the Engineer's Ambition. I'm going to go with pr the President's Speech. And let you know right now, I do plan on playing as a, the Republic of the Rio Grande later on, way down the camp, way down the line, a series of campaigns. So we'll come back and play as other leaders, we'll say, later on. So, Gira promises a land free from tyranny. Well, wow. Look at my war support. Wow, that looks really bad. You know what? If we have zero war, war support already, there's probably no point to just not do it. We might as well broadcast wrestling matches, because, well, we can't go here. And we can't do go there, so. Hey, we still got this, though. We might as well do this now. It's 75 political power. It is very expensive, but I'd rather get more stability. But we have combat language. Might as well do this one, and then we'll go back and do the other stuff. <sighs> Texans. I love you, Texans, but mm, you're hurting me, man. Oh, this is not good. Do that. I really need more saws right now. I really need it. Ah, oh, god dang it, Texas. You're hurting me. Oh, we got a battle cruiser though. Nice. Throw him in there. Hey, at least we got a capital ship. Paulus the Red Wolf. Centurion Navus Polus. 
did not leave Mexico after his defeat, for he knew Kaisar would not tolerate failure. Instead, he and a band of his followers have continued to prey on Rio's outskirts, awaiting better days and dreaming of Mexicans or Mexico's riches. Paulus was largely a nuisance, but everything changed when the TAA attacked. Deprived of its army, its capital ablaze, and its economy in disarray, Paulus's crimson banner was carried at will through Rio's heartland, in some cases approaching Gloria itself. Oh, well, isn't that, isn't that great? Um, I don't want to get that war support yet until this is done. Ah, cool. We'll do it. And now we can do the Rio Contingency Bureau. Rosado has suggested a plan to not just restore old technology, but to come up with new designs and innovations. The Contingency Bureau will ensure we are prepared for anything, my friends. Anything at all. Oh, and here we go. So we can Bureau broadcast a speech. Gira lobbies the Senate. We lose political power. Uh, so this is looks complicated, but if I click enough buttons over here, we should do okay. So I'm going to click on this, and I click on this. So we are in the middle for Gira. We have Senator support, 43%, and 34% of all deputies. If I click on this, we broadcast a speech. And I get a little bit more support. So I think if I just keep clicking this button, I'll get more support. Nice. And do it again, and we're now at 51%. I don't think there's any penalty for me clicking on it often, so it is what it is. We're lobbying the Senate. I only get 1.18 political power a day, which isn't bad. I'm glad I spent my political power earlier on to make sure I had enough or I was gaining enough every single day to do this. Which we should win right now anyways, but I would rather play it safe than sorry, because I don't know what's going on. Uh, yeah. This is a generic one, so I'm just going to do that. Warrior training, very good, my friend. Let's go move this down. Um, there you go. Hmm. We can do that first. Very nice. Yeah, that's not a lot of stability. That's really not a lot. Go to the Senate. As the RRG heads to the polls, the nation's candidates are doing everything they can do to win their support. Eh, might as well. Not bad. So we definitely are in some sort of turmoil or tumultuous period, which is not good for the Republic. The Republic is not doing very well. But we have a contingency bureau, which makes things sound nicer. So we can do the hard reset, Avila's New Deal, which looks really awesome. Or the hard reset. Which looks pretty good as well. Military factory construction speed. Uh, beyond the Rio Grande, we get stability. I'm going to grab that. It only takes two weeks to do. That's pretty good. So, the TAA may have pushed us back across the Rio Grande, but we won't give our give up our citizens without a fight. So that's good. It only takes two weeks. We're going to do that. And then I'll probably do Avila's New Deal. The hard reset sounds nice. But we might get Avila. Avila? So, bail out the arms industry. Shame of the Legion. That looks pretty good, too. Hunt down Paulus. Ooh, we might want to do that, too. Hmm. So I'm thinking, since we want to go with Gira, we probably don't want to rally the people, because that's a hero path, or path of progress, which is Ros Rosado's path, I think? Yeah, Rosado's path, so we probably want to go negotiate for compromise. We're going to do Shame of the Legion, because it only takes two weeks for more stability. Paulus was abandoned by Kaiser for his failure on the Rio Grande, but he still raids outlying settlements with fanatic troubles and raiders. We have to stop this. Oh, I hate raiders. I hate secessionists. Oh, they make... Mexico look bad. Oh, wow, we got quite a few factories. Nice. Um, Yeah, do that. That looks really good. And then we'll make a series of really good thingamabobs. Factories. Yeah, there you go. Local workspaces, awesome. Go ahead and grab this for construction speed. Happy 2276, my friends. We are having a... Well, we're definitely having a year. Let's go grab the speech. How's this looking? We're at 64%. We're doing, definitely doing better than Mora for senators. Hmm. Shame of the Legion. Let's hunt down this pig. Hunt down Paulus. Uh, yeah, we'll do it. So, Paulus has stalked our lands for too, far too long. It's time to put him down. Put him down like the dog he is. Or pig he is. Lobbies of Senate. That'd be nice. Anything else I can do here? Not really. We have 31 factories, which isn't too bad. Infantry equipment is almost done. And APCs, well, we're getting there. We're definitely getting there. Do it fortifications. Nice. Let's grab some coordinated assaults for more breakthrough, because I love breakthrough so much. And let's broadcast another speech. Ooh, Washington Brotherhood. The Senate. I mean, 65% and 34%. That's not too bad. Uh, Mora does have more support from the deputies, which isn't good for us. Which really isn't good. Actually, we lose. We might consider doing... Uh, we don't really have the political power for it, though. Nuevo, the Senator's opinions. I mean, 
Can I get more deputies? That'd be really great. We got some resistors. We might as well do that. And we can hunt down Polus. Boom! Nice. So, old enemies, new allies. Red's an ambassador. Oh, we can hire him. That'd be cool. Uh, Paladins. Paladins far from home. That looks cool. But the Northern Protection Act. The ability to arm militia on the border. Los Minutos. Oh, that's cool. A gift for Kazar. Or we can do this. Well, hmm. Negotiate for compromise. Sign the treaty. Let's go with the Northern Protection Act. So, Gira plans to stop Paulus by establishing a series of frontier militias to stop the raiders. He calls these militias Los Minutos. But unfortunately, that's going to end today's episode. I hope you enjoyed today's episode, my friends. Let me know in the comments below. Closer support? Bombers. I will heed and take notice of all comments regarding that and all your comments otherwise. But if you liked today's video, consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below if you haven't already. And I will see you all tomorrow as we will deal with these Texan rebels and maybe make Mexico, Mexico great. Catch you all tomorrow and have a great rest of your day.